Hello, America. I'm Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, and these are my bullet points. The unnatural disaster that is Joe Biden continues to rage, with some reporting he's developed from a typical storm to a full-on Category 5 disaster. Let's take a look at his carnage. Our relationship with France, they've pulled their ambassador. Our energy sector, where we now rely on OPEC instead of the American roughneck. Our inflation is at a record high since the Great Recession. Our country is being invaded with over 1.5 million illegals crossing this year alone. Our children are being taught to hate each other because of their skin color. Never mind, they are masked and bound in school. And our military is totally being wokeified. Then there's real carnage. Talib Biden literally put the terrorists before American citizens. He provided America's state-of-the-art military equipment to folks who chant death to America and then gave these savages a hit list of Americans, their names and their locations. Joe Biden endangered American citizens and his recklessness led to the death of 13 of our brave American soldiers. His regime created the most well-equipped terrorist regime in the world, and they've got to go. Instead of taking responsibility for this crisis, Biden turned his back on the American people in favor of the White Sands in Wilmington, Delaware. That's right, he went to the beach. But look, I want old Uncle Joe to have as much time at the beach as possible. In fact, my impeachment articles would totally free up his schedule. Should that happen? A quick PSA for Hunter. The white fluff is sand, not cocaine. It's grainy. It would not go down as well as the Parmesan. While Joe Biden was creating a training ground for terrorism, there was one person who could stop him. Kamala could and should. She should have initiated the 25th Amendment to get senile Joe out of the decision room and into the sitting room. You know, the one where they play bingo and it smells like mothballs and the weather channel is on 24 seven, but she didn't. She saw the same signs you and I have seen for months and she has refused to act. I want to be clear, I'm not going nuts. Why should they? It's for them to decide. We'll make your case. I'm not going to. If you, if it holds near and dear to you that you, uh, I'd um, like to be able to, anyway. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international effort to pressure. What? Well, I'm not going to be able to. All right, you tell me, does that look like a commander in chief? The 25th Amendment exists for situations of presidential incapacity. If that isn't presidential incapacity, I don't know what is. Kamala had a moral duty to invoke the 25th Amendment, but instead she's continuing to let whoever is pulling Biden's strings run our country into the ground. Kamala is enabling Joe Biden's shadow presidency, and she deserves to be impeached for failing to step up and save American lives. Afghanistan was a series of bad decisions, followed by Democrats in leadership not being willing to act. It's not because of a lack of ability or energy. It was a lack of interest. You see, all their interest was spent on spending. Democrats are some big spenders of your money. Right now, the so-called moderate Democrats won't commit to voting for the reconciliation package until they get $1 trillion for infrastructure. And the Jihad Squad won't vote for the infrastructure bill until they get $3.5 trillion in pet projects via the reconciliation project. But you know, all Democrats do agree on one thing. 
bankrupting our country, spending trillions of dollars of money we don't have on initiatives we sure as heck don't need. That's the one thing Democrats agree on, and I refuse to play along. I introduced a bill called the AIM Act, the American Infrastructure Modernization Act, which would take $650 billion in unspent CARES funding, right, already approved by Congress, it's already there, and put them towards real infrastructure like roads, bridges, ports, airports. But nope, Democrats want to spend roughly that amount on infrastructure and another several hundred billion dollars on things like salmon recovery and electric school buses. Really? I mean, at this point, we may as well just pronounce the L in salmon because what the heck matters anymore? Now look, I'm serious. I don't know what's the matter with you. Every month, every single month, your bank account is overdrawn. Now what is the reason? You don't give me enough money? And don't even get me started on the reconciliation package where Pelosi put in a $200 million earmark for the Presidio. You know, a park in San Francisco. It makes you wonder, why would she give to the Presidio? So we did some research, and I'll, as always, you just have to follow the money. The Presidio's managing board members have been giving to dear old Pelosi and her friends at the DCCC for years to the tune of $18.8 million. So insert $18 million and get back $200 million. That's one heck of a return, Pelosi, even for a corrupt politician like you. Democrats are saying she deserves this slush fund, but I stood up and I called them out for this bullcrap. Just watch. Speaker Pelosi gets maybe a little bit more and some of the leaders got a little bit more in some of these bills. Well, the truth is they should. If it weren't for her working 24 seven and she does it to keep this place going, we wouldn't be going. This is my only contribution to this debate. No, she should not. No leader should get more added to a bill and should be able to spend more of the taxpayers money just because they are speaker or leader or whatever leadership role that they are in. Pelosi isn't the only one getting fat off this massive spending spree. If passed, this bill would include reckless spending throughout the country. And I highlighted exactly what it would do in the budget committee hearing just last week. Take a look. You know, I just want to start off by saying just how disgusted I was hearing uh, all of these uh, lame excuses by the Democrats and talking about putting American families first. When is when have Democrats ever created jobs? I have created job, jobs, and I know how difficult it is to work against the federal government to create and keep these jobs. That's why I'm here, because too many people went to Washington, D.C. on weak promises and folded, and they overregulated, overspent, overtaxed, and destroyed everything that the American worker is building at home. Democrats do not create jobs. They create bigger government, and there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program. Mr. Chairman, let's call a spade a spade. This bill does nothing to build back better. In fact, it frankly pisses on the American people. It's a political scheme by the Democrats to socialize this country and bankrupt American taxpayers. As a Congresswoman, I refuse to shy away from the biggest issues facing America, whether that's the mental decline of the chief executive the invasion at our southern border. You know, you may have heard that we had about 15,000 illegal aliens in eight days, but if you actually went down to the border and spoke with the agents who are monitoring the situation each and every day, you'd hear that that number is more like 26,000. Or even the loss of our freedoms in the name of COVID control. I take it all head on. But I also work on the issues you won't see on primetime TV. One of the issues greatly affecting Americans, whether you know it or not, is forest management. You see, just last year, Colorado had some of the worst wildfires we've ever seen. And we currently have massive fires happening throughout America. Hundreds of fire crews are battling a blaze in northern Colorado that grew dramatically yesterday, producing heavy smoke and flames. This is an opportunity for Republicans and Democrats to come together because wildfires don't discriminate. They don't have a party affiliation. When they burn down homes, when they destroy critical infrastructure, pollute our air, take lives, and decimate hundreds of thousands of acres, 
They affect all Americans and destroy local communities. If you're serious about improving the environment, you'd start with forest management. Since according to NASA estimates, one large fire emits more pollution in just a few days than all the cars in Colorado emit in an entire year. Americans are tired of choking on smoke and seeing the haze every day from these massive fires. Just recently, Denver registered the worst air quality in the world due to fire pollution. The most frustrating thing about the wildfire crisis is that it, to it is totally preventable. But Democrats don't want to do anything since it hurts their narrative that the earth is burning up due to national security threat number one, climate change. Politicians need to stop caring more about politicking than about actually rolling up their sleeves and getting things done to help Americans. That's why I've introduced the Active Forest Management, Wildfire Prevention, and Community Protection Act. Yep, say that one three times fast. Don't worry, it gets the job done. My bill decreases the national debt and increases taxes by, wait for it, zero dollars. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe that's why Democrats haven't signed on to the bill. My bill increases the number of board feet we'd be harvesting to reduce the cost of wood, bring production up to market demand, and improve the environment by targeting the removal of 6 billion standing dead trees we have in our western forests, all while generating revenue for local governments. Bottom line, my bill would make America proactive when it comes to forest management and not reactive. This means a safer, more prosperous, and economical sound America. While my bill prevents fires from burning down our forests, I'm here in Washington, D.C., preventing Democrats from burning down our country. Thanks for watching my bullet points, and hey, tell your friends to give it a shot.